Good morning, one and all, honors physics students, for another video lesson. Uh, this time, speed of sound in closed tubes. Honors physics students, good morning. Uh, Tuesday morning, March 24th. I uh, would like to just start with a couple of announcements today. Uh, number one, uh, we're going to need to download an app of some kind for measuring the frequency of a certain sound. Okay, I think that might be able to get you through the uh, upcoming lab handout that I've got. Also, uh, we can probably do this individually. I'll do some demonstrations for you today uh, into tomorrow to uh, get you guys some data to fill out, but you might want some data of your own to fill out. So if you have a chance to download an app to your phone about measuring frequency of some certain sounds, like if you hit a piano key, that frequency would come up as A440, 440 hertz. Okay? Second announcement, I think after our uh, Google Meet this morning, that we would have to proceed as if we are not coming back to school for the remainder of the school year. Welcome back. So, I have a couple cool demonstrations for you here today. I've got these bottles. They're all different. First one. Second one. So why would it be that those bottles would have different pitches of sound coming out of them when you blow over the top of the tubes, of the bottle openings? Hmm. Let's have a little think about that. Okay guys, so I backed off a little bit here to show you my resonance tube setup. It's just a large graduated cylinder filled with water with a glass tube in the middle. And you can see that if I have a tuning fork here, that this tuning fork, or one of these types of forks, I have three different kinds, and I'll be using these to create some data for you guys tomorrow. But if I use this tuning fork and create a vibration, the fork will vibrate back and forth at a predetermined frequency. It's actually on the fork itself. You can see where it says number there. It says actually 426.3a. So this fork vibrates at 426.7 hertz when you force it to vibrate. So I'll just hit it on my sheet here. And right about there, Get a larger sound. This sound is the speed of sound, is a sound wave traveling down through the air column, hitting the water level, reflecting off the water level, and coming back out through the tube, constructively interfering with this fork. Resonating. Hmm, kind of like the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Collapse. So, uh, if I took a different fork, this is 286, 288 in the form of B. So you can see, maybe it's right about there. Let's see if that's right. Okay, so, long story short, the speed of sound, or the sound waves, 
travel through closed tubes on the order of about by quarter of wavelength when they come out of the tube. So what does this mean? That means that every quarter of a wavelength, every quarter or three quarters, by half wavelength actually, there's a, there's a constructive interference pattern happening. Now it's a little bit difficult to understand just by talking through this. So I'm going to show you a picture of some of those waves coming down through the tube and back out again. Okay, guys, I'm going to come back to this uh, 426.7 hertz tuning fork. And I'm going to use a tape measure to measure the approximate distance of the air current. Okay, I think that's about my best air current down here. Right about there seems to be about the best. So if I take my measure this air con, it looks to be about seven inches. So if I can convert that to centimeters, then I can get uh, oh, about 15 and a half centimeters, I believe. And the diameter of the tube is about an inch and a half. So that's about uh, three and a quarter centimeters. So let's go back to our magic board and just mark that example one time. Well, that'll do it for today, guys. I hope that gets you started on speed of sound and closed tubes. Now, don't forget to view the video on the Google Doc about open tubes. There's a guy who does a really nice demonstration with open tube format there. Uh, much better than I could display in my home office here today. So, make sure you check out the open tube format, which goes by half wavelength. And then I've got the, the demonstration for the quarter tube wavelength of closed tubes. There's a few extra problems in your book. You might want to take a, a moment to practice a couple of those. But there, again, if there's any problems, please send me your questions by email, and I'll address them in the next video. Have a great day, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.